There's been a lot of work over the last decade on the science of learning, and we can really benefit from that in the classroom. It's important to understand how we learn to be the best learner you can possibly be. And to really understand how we learn, firstly, I want you to understand why we forget. And the reason for that is it's possibly due to evolution. See, every organism on Earth is evolved for survival. Everything that an organism does is geared for its survival. In nature, uh, organisms don't expend energy for things that are wasteful. So that would be the same with the brain as well. Why would the brain store memories that aren't useful, that don't contribute to survival? So if you can imagine that if you're being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, why would it be important to know your times tables? So for that reason, we've got this neuroplasticity in that the brain is continually um, reinforcing memories that are important, uh, but also removing and pruning off memories that are no longer relevant. So how does a memory occur then? Well, it's actually a physical process where there's a connection between nerves. So if that's the end of one nerve, uh, and it forms a connection with the next nerve. And this is what we call a synapse, or a connection between nerves. But a memory is not just a connection between two nerves. It's this massive web of interconnectedness with maybe thousands of different nerves. So when we, remember, when we make a memory, we're actually making a connection between physical nerves in the brain. I want to show you this model. It's called the multi-store model. So firstly, we have sensory input. Now, this sensory input then, um, you know, it comes from our, 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 our environment, so our eyes and our ears and our other senses. Uh, and that goes into our sensory memory. And sensory memory is very, very short term. It's just holding, you know, it's kind of like you've heard a, um, a sound uh, and it's kind of echoing there in your head for just a couple of seconds before it goes. What needs to happen for it to move on to the next part of your memory is that you need to attend to it. So attention. And so quite simply, if you're not attending when you're in a lesson or when you're watching a video or when you're reading a, less, uh, reading a, a text, if you're not attending, then that sensory input is simply going to be lost. And it won't even go in. So I've had people who said, I'm gonna go home and play Mr. G's um, videos on YouTube over and over while I'm studying for another subject because surely it's going to sink in. You know what? It's not. And the reason for that is because you need to attend, you need to have attention. So we've got this filter here right from the start that only a small amount of the information from the sensors actually goes into the next stage which is our short term memory. So only short, small amount of all of the sensory input. For example, you're probably sitting on a chair now, and if you attend to it, you're probably aware of the pressure of the cushion on your bottom, or on your back against the backrest, or maybe your shoes are a little bit too tight, or now you're aware of your breathing, because I've just told you, or, or your, your heart pounding. Stop thinking about that and listen to me. All right, so you've got to attend to the right stuff, and there's this funnel to stop um, to filter out most of the information going into your short-term memory. So, you know, to keep something in your short-term memory, like a phone number or maybe somebody's name that you've just met, how do you keep that in your short-term memory before it fading off in 30 seconds time, is rehearsal. You need to continually rehearse it in your brain. Rehearsal, rehearsal keep on repeating it in your head. Um, how much can you keep in short term memory? Maybe five to seven digits or chunks, um, and that's about it. Whilst you continue to rehearse it, then it continues to stay in your memory, but you have to be attending to it. And the next step is, of course, our long-term memory. Now, long-term memories are the synapses. It's the connection between the, um, the nerves, it's a physical connection and this web of interconnectedness that occurs. So how does it go from short term to long term memory? Well that's called transfer. And then of course getting it out 
is retrieval. All right, so now we need to talk about what can we do, what do we know from cognitive science to help this process of going from short-term memory to long-term memory and really stick. So first of all, thinking about the saber-toothed tiger and evolution, we only remember stuff that's important. So what we need you to do is find a link, find why it's important for you to remember this piece of information. And the way we do that is by connecting it with what we already know. So we need to activate our prior knowledge. What we try and do is try and activate your prior knowledge so you can make a link between the two. And going from short term memory, you're having to draw back on what you already know and your prior knowledge and you're going back and forth between your short term and your long term memory several times to make this link. That's what makes the connection stick. You have to tell your brain that it's important to learn this stuff so it doesn't get pruned off. So the way we do that is through retrieval practice. And simply what that means is that we um, we retrieve the information a number of times in a number of different ways. Now the cool thing about this is if we get you to practice or you do it yourself, practice something in lots of different ways, well that makes the web of interconnectedness stronger. So how can we do it lots of different ways? Well firstly you're seeing it on the video, you're taking some notes and writing a summary. So you're retrieving it again by writing your summary. And then we're applying it in maybe a worksheet or post video questions. Then if you do something else like an experiment or um, you then teach the person you're sitting next to or if you go home and um, you know maybe do some homework or something, well all of this is more retrieval practice. Really importantly is that it, it, well, it's important to have a break between your re re retrieval practice as well. So having a sleep and then having another go is actually really, really important. So you can't assume that looking at something once you're going to remember because you simply won't. You need to tell that brain of yours, hey, this is important to remember. Don't prune it off. It's important for my survival. Next thing is that learning needs to be active. Quite simply, you need to actually do stuff with the stuff that you're learning. because so You're telling your brain that it's important. So what's active learning? Well, it's doing things like worksheets and activities at the bench, um, you know, in your book. It's about doing things like um, experiments where you're applying your knowledge. It's about solving problems. You know, you have to do stuff. You have to use it to tell your brain that this is actually important. So the next thing we need to do is actually you need to work hard. It needs to be effortful. The reality is that learning needs to be hard work. If it's not hard, then you're not getting this transfer. You're not making a solid long-term memory. So when stuff gets hard, that's when you need to be saying, cool, now I'm really working hard with my memory and I'm gonna make some really good quality memories here. So don't be afraid of having to work hard. We give you activities that are hard because learning needs to be effortful. So one of the ways we talk about this is desirable difficulties. So we don't make something so ridiculously hard that you can't get near it, but it does, you need to be prepared to work hard because that's important for memory to occur. The next thing is that learning is actually social. It's important to, um, to work, uh, to work with other people with your learning because that allows you to hear it from somebody else, um, to teach somebody else. So you, you're doing this transfer and retrieval from your short term to your long term memory uh, a number of times and strengthening those synapses and that's really, really important. So just as a final summary, learning for it to stick your brain needs to understand that it's relevant and important to keep, otherwise it'll be pruned off. So this is the science of learning and the more you understand this, the better you will be at learning. Good luck.